Hey, what's going on guys? Krosama here. So today we're taking a look at a pretty amazing model kit today. That's a goddamn lie. What are you talking about, Steve? Crow, you already built this kit. And I remember back in 2016, you cried about how much you absolutely hated it. So what makes you think I'm going to believe what you say now? Well, you are right. I did actually say I hated this kit back in 2016. But you know, after building it a second time, I kind of have a change of heart. Change of heart, my ass. I know you too well, Crow. When you say you hate a kit, you absolutely mean it. You've never had a change of heart on any other kit before. No, I did. I actually had a change of heart on you. What the fuck you mean? Well, before I absolutely loved you as a kid, you was fantastic, and you know, I think as a large 1 of 48 scale, you had great articulation and some pretty good accessories. And then you spoke. <sighs> well, I'm not going to stand here and be insulted. Go ahead, enjoy your review, Crow. But I know deep down inside you absolutely hate this kid. Well, we'll just have to see in the review if I truly hate it or if I love it. Okay, so before we get into the actual review portion of this kit, I do want to make a couple of shout outs. One is going to be to Forge Horizon because he is the one who actually sent me this kit. And this is going to be my first ever sponsored review from a member. So basically, if you are a member, you have the ability to sponsor a video by which you, you know, send me either the funding or the kit itself, built or unbuilt, and then I'll review it on the channel. So thank you to Forge for sending me this kit. And I do apologize for having this, you know, being so late into the game. I think I built this sometime early September. Uh, so yeah, it's been about a month uh, since I built it, but I did want to uh, get some other products out there to review. But nonetheless, thank you, Forge. And although New Type HQ is not directly sponsoring this video, they are a major contributor into this overall channel's success. So if you can, visit their website and type in that slash croissant at the end of NewTypeHQ.com so that way you can get 10% off your first purchase. But let's get into the review. So no unboxing portion in this review, but I will talk about the box. It is the Verka box. I still have a couple of uh, extra loose parts in here, but this is a beautiful box. I've always been very keen to the Verka boxes because they're very simplistic. I love the white backdrop and the illustration art on the front. Uh, whereas a lot of other, you know, Master Grades, they go for more of the CG kind of uh, renders with like a diorama or situation base. This is just a very simple, I think beautiful looking pose of its standing, and it's very simplistic. I like that. Now the kit came out in 2009, I think around December, and it retailed at 3,800 yen, so roughly about 38 bucks. Uh, nowadays, you can easily find it for much less than $38. You can probably find it for somewhere in the 20s of dollars, so probably like $26, $28. At least I have over here in Japan. Now, that does not mean the cheaper the kit can be, the cheaper of the quality of the kit. In fact, I think there is a lot to offer in this. Now, let's just go ahead and jump right into the details of this kit. So, for details on the surface, it's really not going to have that much in terms of panel lines. It has some here and there, but I think for the most part, it's a lot of just smooth, angular, kind of, uh, you know, rounded parts. So if you want to scribe, it might be a little bit of a challenge because there's not a lot of hard edges. It's pretty, like, pretty much smooth edging on, like, the skirts, the legs, as well as the shoulders. So... I don't know. I don't know how you would approach this when it comes to scribing if you even want it to have more of a mechanical design. I kind of like the more simplistic look of it as of right now, uh, but if you do want to paint it, I mean, there's a lot of different things you could do in terms of masking, and you can kind of get that different like color separation. Uh, so mainly in like the front of the arms, you can mask that off and then just paint one part of it like a, a neutral gray or even like a light gray, and then the other part can be white. However you want to approach it. I'm probably going to be doing that exact thing I just mentioned and maybe actually try to give it some hard edge lining so kind of like how you see with the anime style painting I think I want to try that with this kit now this kit does come with plenty of stickers and it's going to be mostly for like the red for the color correcting on the legs as well as the uh, the elbow joints not too bad honestly you can just freehand paint this it's not really that complicated it, it has like hard edges so that way you can guide your paintbrush especially a thin 
paintbrush, a fine tip, and get all that red on the elbows as well as the uh, the legs. So not really too much of a problem there for color correcting that. And uh, you are going to get a lot of other like caution signs and you know warning decals. So hey, throw it all on there just like Kotoki would want you to. Now before we get into the articulation, I do want to mention that this kit is a transforming mobile suit. With that, there is usually a lot of complications because you're packing a lot into a very tiny master grade and there's going to be limitations. You can't really have a 100% all-rounded perfected kit in 2009 that transforms as much as this does. The Zeta is kind of an exception because the Zeta 2.0 did come out, uh, I think, a few years earlier. But that's kind of a wave rider mode and it's fairly simplistic. But when it comes to this, there's like more transformation gimmicks and the separation, it's, it's a little bit more complex, I would say. So with that disclosure, let's get into the articulation. The first thing being the head is going to be on a ball joint and because that has like a little core fighter part, it's going to be able to go up and down. Moving down to the body, there is absolutely no movement whatsoever. And this is something I, I just really disliked back in 2016 when I built it, is that without a waist swivel, ab crunch, or anything, getting in, into poses can be awkward, and it's just going to look a little bit weird on your shelf. So, I mean, take it for what you will. I would probably recommend maybe go the high-grade route if you really want dynamic poses, because I've seen a lot of poses with the high grade, it looks fantastic. I'm not too sure if that one had a uh, waist rotation whatsoever, but it, it just looked better, in my opinion. But the Master Grade still holds its own. So yeah, the waist is going to be pretty bad. For the arm, it's just going to be a peg and socket system, so it can move all around and can go a little bit back and forth. The shoulders can move up, and then the front of the shoulders has these little parts that can actually rotate around. Bicep rotation? Double bend at the elbow, but it's going to look pretty bad once it goes all the way up. Hand is going to be on a ball joint, and thumb is going to be on a ball joint. Front skirts can move back and forth and can go up and down. Side skirts are going to be on a ball joint. Back skirt can move up and out. Backpack thrusters can move up and down. Hips are going to be on a ball and socket. Now for the knee, it is going to be able to move all the way back, which is just beautiful. Front ankle armor is going to be on a ball joint. Foot can point down, and ankle pivot is going to be side to side. So with the articulation, overall, it's not really that bad. I just think that it could have been better, but I understand there's probably just limitations that came with the transformation, so I don't really knock Bandai too hard for it, but I don't know, man. It's just a little bit disappointing. Now, something to note is that this kit is, a, I guess, like a first edition or something like that because it came with a bunch of clear parts, and I don't think all the, the Victory Ver Kaz come with clear parts. I think it's only like a select few that are part of like a first batch wave or something like that. So yeah, it's pretty neat that it came with like a bunch of the body, front skirts, uh, and like some other little parts that are all clear. So if you do get the one that has the clear, I would actually recommend you using them. Now in terms of gimmicks, the transformation is an obvious gimmick, but aside from that, you do get the cockpit that can actually come out. So that's actually pretty cool, little extra little thing that if you want to display it with the cockpit open, you can do so. Now another little feature this kit's gonna have is that you can change it from the Victory Gundam head over to the Hexa unit head. So you kinda get a little playroom with what unit you actually wanna have, and my preferred one is going to be the Hexa unit. For accessories, you are gonna have the pilot with the Haro. You get two beam sabers that are actually mounted in the arms. The two beam saber effect parts. You get a beam saber fan, which is really weird, but kinda cool. You get the beam rifle, and you get the beam shield that connects directly into the back of the arm. You also get two core fighters, so you can have one with the Hex unit, and the other one can actually have the Victory Gundam head. So if you want to swap out at any time, you can do that. You get multiple hands, so you get the ones that can actually hold the weapons. You get these open hands, and you also get the fists. I, I think you all know exactly how I feel about transformations. Honestly, it's just not my thing. I try my hardest to really enjoy most of the Gundams that have transformations, but I would say they all just fall flat for me. Except for things like the Delta Plus, which looks fantastic. Even the Wave Rider mode for the you know Zeta, I think, looks great. But unless you're just like really in the Macross kind of realm of transformations where it's a very seamless one and it's really hard to tell the difference between aircraft and MS, then I'm really not going to enjoy it. Uh, most of the stuff from Double O, 
maybe maybe the uh, the over flags get kind of a pass because I do like the the flags in general, but I, w- I would say a vast majority I don't like. I don't like the wing. I, I think the transformation is not that great looking. Um, it, it just it looks like a weird bird. I know that's what it's going for, but I, I just don't see the uh, the perks behind it. So yeah, a little bit of bias here, but I'm not enjoying any of the bottom fighters, the top fighters, the core fighters, any of the fighters within the victory kit. Now for height comparisons, it's very tiny. Within the lore, it's about 15 meters tall, and I think it's about three meters shorter than the ARC 78-2. So it's gonna be shorter than what I consider one of the shortest of the UC Gundams, which is the RX. Um, but this one is definitely like, I guess once they keep going further and further into uh, later UC, they all just get really tiny because it's not just this one. It's also F91, F90. Uh, you also have the crossbones, which are very, very tiny mobile suits. So it's always kind of funny that they just keep packing all this, you know, beautiful features and just like amazing uh, performances into a tiny mobile suit. But it all started off with about an 18 uh, meter high mobile suit. So for my final thoughts, honestly, I both love and hate this model kit. I'm not talking about design. We're taking the lore. We're taking the anime, all that away from this. We're talking strictly model kit. I love it for the fact that it looks gorgeous standing. Now, you can get in some good poses. I've done that previously. Uh, You've seen it on the video. It can get into some really good dynamic poses. What I would say is getting it on a stand is a little bit of a headache. I don't really like the fact that there's no uh, f- like valid ports to you know really plug it in. Um, but I think aside from that, you get a lot with this fairly cheap master grade. You get two different core fighters which can carry a different head unit depending on you know what you're feeling. Uh, you get the beam rifle, you get plenty of beam sabers, you get the beam fan, which is very unique. Uh, plethora of uh, decals both in uh, dry applies as well as sticker form although water slides is definitely your better option but i i accept dry transfers and this is easily one of the better representations of the victory in model form that we've ever gotten Uh, i've seen a couple of blogs that had reviews for it back in the day when it first came out i can't remember i think it was dial long uh or someone else but they kind of mentioned this is like a perfect model kit like they gave it almost like pretty much perfect scoring all, all around um i cannot subscribe to that because although parts don't really like fall off i do find myself having issues with uh, everything staying you know the integrity of everything staying together when i start doing poses uh some parts like to kind of pop off or or be loose but i'm, I'm really i'm really making the poses go extreme so there's there's a lot of stress going on but when he said that this is borderline on a perfect model kit or perfect master grade for that uh, matter i was thinking did you actually see every other master grade that came before 2009 you got things like the 2004 freedom gundam you have the zeta 2.0 you have the uh, nemo you have the mark 2 2.0 the strike freedom the high new the zaku 2.0 the turn a and the gundam 2.0 that came out just a year before this guy so when he says like this is a perfect model kit I'm going to assume this is a perfect uh, victory model kit because that is a fact. But if you're saying this is a perfect model kit, um, I'm going to have to say no, unless you're putting those other kits I just mentioned on a much higher tier. So uh, maybe I'm just being biased, but building like the 2.0 Gundam and the Zaku 2.0, those, those are some perfect kits. Otherwise, what could I say? This is a cop it. 100% cop this kit if you can. Now, if you're going above 38 bucks, eh, that's a judgment call on you. But for me, I would say this is going to be something you're going to want on your shelf, especially if you are a UC fanboy, much like myself. Um, I think it looks great. The colors are popping. If you're going to paint it, uh, you better do a damn good job because you don't want to mess this beautiful, beautiful design up by giving it a sloppy paint job. Uh, this I don't think is anyone's should be anyone's practice paint job kit. So if you are going to be doing any kind of work to it, make sure you're bringing your best techniques and best traits to the table. But that's it for me, guys. I want to give a special thanks to Forge Horizon for supplying me this kit and just giving me a second chance on really appreciating the victory kit. I I love it. I think it's actually fantastic. Has issues, but hey, most kits they come with issues. 
And I also want to give a special shout out to all the members of the channel. Thank you all guys so much for supporting me throughout every single month. And all the Discord peeps, all you guys are fantastic. If you yourself want to become a member, go ahead and check the join button down below. Look at all the perks to see which one is more applicable for you. And if you do become a member, hit me up. I'll give you that Discord link. And you can join the Discord uh, members only channel. We have a lot of great stuff that we do. And if you want to cop your own kits from Japan, hey, Members is definitely the way to go. But that's it for me, guys. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next review. Bye-bye.